Coming up on today's show, let's start off by talking about the NFL games yesterday. We'll start off the week by getting in a couple bets, and let's do a free giveaway. It's been too long. Let's do a free giveaway. Let's do it. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Jason Mattis with Winning Bets. Thanks for hanging out with me on today's episode and kicking off your week here with Winning Bets. I greatly appreciate it. Hope you guys had a fantastic weekend. Let's talk about that weekend and start off Sunday with the NFC Championship game, talking about the Bucks and the Packers. My biggest takeaway from that game in terms of performance-wise was definitely that Buccaneers defense that was, you know, damn near dominant at times. You know, Brady was putting them in some tough situations with him throwing multiple three interceptions in that game and, you know, defense getting out there on quick turnarounds, getting, you know, like I said, getting put, getting uh, getting out there in tough situations. And that Buccaneers defense just rose to the occasion. So that was just a really, you know, really good, fantastic job for them. They did an outstanding job, you know, all game long of putting pressure on Aaron Rodgers. We talked about how he didn't even take a sack in last week's playoff game, but that was not the situation with this Buccaneers defense. Obviously led the way by JPP, just a really good, fantastic game. You know, one of the other big takeaways in that game was right there before halftime. You know, it looked like maybe the Packers were going to get some points. They get a, they get a turnover there on an interception where, you know, Aaron Rodgers had only thrown five interceptions all season, but they came up with a big one there. Looked like maybe there wasn't going to be enough time left. And then, you know, <laughs> Scotty Miller gets gets past the corner over the top and, you know, Brady drops in the touchdown right there. That was just a, a, just a monster sequence there in that game. You know, it took me obviously back to earlier in the season with that Raiders-Jets game. It's it's how can you let the receiver get by you there? You, you can't let the receiver get by you there end of the game situation you know end of the half situation it's it just it's just a it's just bad play there by that corner letting him get there so that was you know a, a big sequence in that play there and obviously went in the Buccaneers favor uh, favor uh, you know favor there and then also late in that game what were the Packers doing there kicking that field goal what, what were they doing from the 10-yard line you're gonna go ahead and kick a field goal I just I thought that was I thought that was totally the wrong call, and then I thought it was backed up by another wrong call. So you so you do that because you just want to get some quick points on the board, and then you want to have your defense go out there and get a stop because you've got all three timeouts and you still got the two minute warning. So you want to get a stop and get the ball back. So in that situation, one first down, it's over, right? It, it's over. So we're not kicking onside kick there. I mean, onside kicks are pretty impossible, but what does it matter if the Buccaneers get the ball, you know, on their own 25-yard line or around half field? Either way, if they get fir- one first down, they're then going to take a knee and knee and you know t- take a knee and, and run out the clock that way. So you might as well at least try the onside kick, even though it's impossible as can be. I mean, the Bills got an onside kick uh, in yesterday's game; it was successful. Maybe rare as hell, but you might as well at least give yourself another opportunity. Might as well give yourself the onside kick opportunity. And then, okay, then you, you fall back on your original strategy, which is hoping your defense, you know, can get a stop. So just just, just thought the overall, obviously the Bucks were the better team overall on that day. Uh, Defense-wise, I, I think defense, you know, won their performance there. I mean, the, the Bucks' offense was, you know, impressive in, in scoring some points, but I thought dominant-wise and more, more impressive was that defense. But then just some really good or some really bad late-game, you know, management there by Matt LaFour. I didn't get the field goal, and then I thought, again, you might as well at least tempt the onside kick as, as difficult as it is. You might as well at least – uh, increase another opportunity for you to get the ball. So uh, hats off to the Bucks. Obviously, you know, being a Bills fan over the years, it's 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 gut wrenching. It's gut wrenching to see you know Tom Brady in an off season was there when there was no off season. You know, get a whole new offense. You know, jump conferences, go to the NFC, and, and just dominate. You know, just quite frankly dominate and and get into another Super Bowl. So that's tough to see as a Bills fan. And of course, it's you know the whole. You know, now he's going to be playing a Super Bowl in his backyard. It's like, you know, it's almost like, what can't this guy do? It's, it's actually remarkable. When I say, uh, you know, don't like him or hate him, it's 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 respect. I mean, it's, it's certainly out of respect, but gosh, damn it. I'm going to be rooting for the Chiefs on a Super Bowl just because I don't want to see Brady get another one. Regardless of how I think it, I haven't, I haven't quite analyzed and handicapped the game, but I don't want to see Brady do it. I don't want to see him do it. <laughs> I don't want to see him do it. So let's talk about it now for that Bills-Chiefs game. Bills with a great start, you know, got that early field goal. Then they get that muff punt there by the Chiefs, are able to capitalize, get a touchdown. And then it was all Chiefs after that. The Chiefs, as a matter of fact, after their initial punt on their first drive, they didn't punt the rest of the game. Not only did they not punt the rest of the game, 
every single drive ended in points. Whether it was a field goal or a touchdown, after that first drive punt, they got points that rest of the way. You're, you're not going to beat the Chiefs like that. You've got to get some stops against this Chiefs team, and the Bills just did not do that after, again, after the first drive. Chiefs were far and away the better team yesterday. They, Bills had no answer for Kelsey. No answer for Kelsey. I thought Romo did a pretty good job on the broadcast. Like, why not mix it up? Why not jam him at the line? At least, you know, make him have to fight to get off the line of scrimmage. You're letting the man get a free release, run down the field, 8, 10, 9, 10 yards, turn around, catch the ball, and then get a few more after the catch. So that was real, just real piss poor job by that Bills defense. They they seemed like they didn't really alter their strategy at all. It was whatever they're doing, even if it's not working, they're not answering it. So Kelsey was, you know, a monster that game. And then overall the Bills had no answer for the Chiefs speed. Whether it was, you know, Hardman or Hill, they just had no answer. Those guys were I mean we know they're fast, but the Bills didn't do anything to again, they didn't do anything to mix it up. So again, Chiefs are the far and away the better team and I yesterday. So you know they deserve that victory. Obviously, you know, I think what the Bills will be back there in that situation for at least for the next few years to come. They've got a young team. They still got a salary cap that they can manage here and they haven't, you know, paid Josh Allen, you know, the big time dollars yet. So they, they they their window is definitely, you know, for sure still open just given everything there that I mentioned. So we'll see. We'll come back. We'll get them next year. We'll get them next year. So let's uh before we give you the bets again, I got some bets I want to give you guys today. And I've also got the free giveaway. I, you guys deserve it. I want to do another free giveaway. But let's start off by recapping the week and kind of set the table on kind of where we are so far here in the 2021 betting season. Let's just start off with Sunday. It's the most recent event. So let's go ahead and throw up those stats. <sighs> Monster day, baby. Monster day we had yesterday. As you guys can see, we went 3-0 and in soccer, putting over 3.25 units in your pocket. Started off with the nice Lazio Sassuolo. Both teams will score at over 2.5. That one cashed. I think midway through the second half, they, each team has scored in the first half, so we're just needing you know one goal there in the second half. And I think again about midway, it was from our boy Ciro Immobile. That guy is that guy's incredible. He scores damn near every single game, so that was a good one. Then we took Byron over 7.5 shots on target. That was a good one right there as well. I thought that was surprising. That was a plus money. That was a plus 155, and they were going up against Schalke, the worst team in the Bundesliga. Byron was. I know Byron has been struggling, but. I mean, Byron is Byron. Schalke is the worst team in the league. Over 7.5 at plus money. Absolutely love that bet. And then I did a three-team parlay. Uh, Chelsea and Everton were involved in the FA Cup going up against lower-tier clubs. And then, again, Byron was obviously going up against Schalke, and all three of those clubs won the game relatively easily. So just a really good day in soccer, 3-0 and and plus 3.25 units. Carried that winning ways on the NFL. You guys remember I gave you four, the first four bets here on this tweet were all the ones I gave you on YouTube on Friday's show. So every single bet I gave you on Friday's show was a winner here on YouTube. Started off with that Devontae Adams over 7.5 receptions. It was a sweat. I mean, he didn't get his he didn't get his eighth catch until very late there in that fourth quarter. I think it was maybe even the last drive of the game or the second to last drive of the game. But he came through like we said it, it like we even said on Friday's show. If the Packers needed a drive late in the game you knew who they were going to go to, and that's exactly what they went to. They went to Devontae Adams there for his eighth catch. They went to Brady under 289.5 passing yards. That was a big-time sweat. That was a huge sweat. Even in that first half on that third down play when he hit Godwin on that 52-yard pass, I started shaking my head. I was like, man, that's on third down. You know, they have a chance to get off the field. Instead, he hits a 52-yard pass. I thought I was definitely in trouble after that play. And then at halftime, I thought I was in trouble too. Again, you know, you think Packers have the ball. Okay, cool. Bucks won't see this, you know, ball again, uh, you know, until the second half. But then you get the interception. And now Brady's able to go back out there. He hits, you know, again, Scotty Miller on the big play. So that was a hell of a hell of a sweat there. But that one came through. Mike Evans under 63.5. That one came through as well. Obviously was nervous after the first drive. They went to Mike Evans there multiple times. Uh, but he didn't really he didn't really do much the rest of the way. He had an opportunity there in the fourth quarter. Brady missed him on a couple passes. Uh, Evans also combined that with him missing a couple of those same passes. So he didn't he didn't I think he ended up with about 42, 43 yards or so. So we, we had a good little bit of breathing room there. But it was still nervous just because of that you know first first drive success that Mike Evans had. And then again that fourth quarter Brady was certainly going to him. So he didn't he you know just. Oof, this is just a nervous sweat bet there. These under bets are nervous, but three under bets hit. Man, they're always nervous, but it feels good when they come through. And then the other one we got through that I gave you guys on Friday's YouTube show was Devin Singletary under 63.5 yards. Great, great, great bet there. Thank you. Ended up with. 
like 17 rushing yards and 12 passing yards or something. I mean, wasn't even close to anywhere, 63.5 yards. Bills just aren't a good running team. You saw it. I mean, they tried to run the ball more than they had against the Colts and the Ravens, but they were just unsuccessful like they had been majority of the season. They weren't a good rushing team this season. So that one had just had a ton of good value there. And then he was little little used in the passing game. So just a good one there, under 63.5 yards. Did get tripped up on two NFL bets. Stephon Diggs, I tweeted that one out. He did not get eight catches. I think he ended the game with six catches. So a little bit unfortunate there. Uh, they had opportunities to go to Diggs a little bit more than I thought. I thought he was open or they could have designed more plays for him. But it was unfortunate. He didn't quite get it. And then I tweeted out another one. Couldn't help but use a DraftKings promo, 25% profit boost on a two-legged NFL uh, parlay on Sunday's action. Thought the Packers were obviously going to win the game. You guys knew that from the Fox Best Super 6 at. And then I thought the Bills were certainly going to keep it close, if not even pull out a win there. So that obviously neither one of those hit. So overall in the NFL is 4-2 and two and plus 1.63 units. That brought us to on the Sunday overall total, as you can see there, right there. Just a really good day. Went 7-2 and two and plus 4.8 eight units really good day let's go ahead now and recap that entire weekend and to show up here the whole tweet there that shows the weekend and everything so friday was a profitable day a little bit of profit they went two for two on friday uh, it was, was plus 0.23 units. Saturday was a little bit of a setback. They had a rough day in soccer. Also tried a uh, college basketball parlay, another DraftKings promotion. Didn't, quite, didn't get that to hit. But then again, Sunday was the big day there, coming in at plus 4.88 units. And then you can see the overall breakdown there. There's been four weeks so far in 2020. First two were profitable. Uh, last week was the was 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 obviously or I guess that was now be two weeks ago. We know that was a bad week here for us on the show, but then we bounced back again last week. Had a little bit of profit over over half a unit, so still still in the hole overall in the season, but but not overall big. Again, three of the four weeks so far this season have been profitable, and we'll look to obviously turn one more profitable week here coming up this week, and we'll see if we can't get, dig completely up that hole. So where does that put us now overall in terms of, you guys recall, we put $1,500, $500 in DraftKings, $500 in FanDuel, and $500 in points bet. Well, there's the breakout right there. FanDuel's at 538 DraftKings is at $401, and points bet is at $532 for a total of there of 1472 so that's roughly $30 and we know $15 unit so that's roughly two units so that's how again on that tweet that I showed that we are down uh, 1.87 units that's how that makes sense right there so um, just really good that we've been profitable three out of four weeks it's unfortunate that the big losing week was kind of I mean it was that was a big losing week so that was quite unfortunate I do have a free $100 bet I did get from DraftKings um you see here in the last few days, Virginia and Michigan have both rolled out their sports betting program. So I've, I've got to know some friends in that area. And plus, I then I sent out a tweet and had some random people hit me up. So I did the refer a friend on DraftKings. I got a free $100 bet. They don't. So FanDuel will just give you the money in site credit, which is really them just giving you money. you got to use the money once on FanDuel, and then it'll revert from site credit to just your actual bankroll. DraftKing doesn't do that. If you see here on the tweet, and this is just some random bet just so I can show you, 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 you make a selection on DraftKings, and then you get the free $100 bet option. So this $100 bet isn't factored into my bankroll because that's not how DraftKing gets it. So I've got to find a bet between now and February 23rd that I absolutely fall in love at, and then I'll make it a $100 bet. So that's exactly what I'll do. I'm going to do it sometime this week. There's no reason to drag it out. Uh, there's always a bet that you love, you know, certainly on a daily or a weekly basis. So someday this week, I'll go ahead and pull the trigger on that and then see if we can't win that bet. And then it'll revert into our bankroll there. So I think I may even have on FanDuel some other refer of friends come in. I know I've reached out to a couple other friends that were thinking about signing up for sports betting there. And then another, like I said, a random guy hit me up on Twitter. So that was really cool of that. So we'll see if we can't get some actual real units dropped into our bankroll there, at least on the FanDuel side. All right, as for some bets for on today's show, I've already made a quick video and given you guys Nikola Jokic over 42.5 points, rebounds, and assists. Broke that down. It's only a quick one-minute video. I'll link it here at the end. So if you haven't you know, you know, watched that video and gotten any justification, but he's in a really, really good matchup being a center up against this Mavs team. So hopefully you guys will decide to join me on that one. And then I only have one other bet for you here. I've do got the Lakers and the Cavs are going at it today. Look at these rankings here for the Cavs team. The Cavs rank 28th in three-point uh, field goal percentage allowed, and it's 21st in their last three games. The Cavs rank 28th overall in field goal percentage allowed in their last three, and it's 20th overall. 
The Cavs ranked 29th in points allowed in their last three. The Cavs ranked 28th in defense efficiency in their last three. The Cavs rank in the bottom third in points allowed, three-pointers made allowed to shooting guards so far this season. And the Cavs allow 49.4% field goal percentage allowed to shooting guards. So I'm going to focus in on the shooting guard there for the Lakers, KCP. He averages 10.7 points on the season. He shoots 54.5% field goal percentage, and he shoots 55.6% from three-point uh, from three-point land this season. So I'm going to go ahead and take KCP over 9.5 points, and that comes in at plus 118 over at DraftKings. Cavs are struggling. They've gone up against the Brooklyn Nets here recently and the Celtics, another big boy opponent coming. Uh, again, lots of numbers there that suggest that the defense is struggling and is struggling to the shooting guard position. So I'll go ahead and take KCP, who's, who's arguably one of the best shooters on that team just a pure shooter on that Lakers team this guy's really good you're shooting 50 55 percent from the 3.8 that is just really really good right there all right want to get a couple more things here just on your radar I maybe I'm looking at this trailblazers they've got a rebounding advantage up against Oklahoma uh, uh the Oklahoma City Thunder but there's no prop bets on any of these sports books yet here for the trailblazers or at least not DraftKings FanDuel does have them but I always like to wait until multiple books have it so then I can compare and price shop the, the FanDuel prices aren't going to change all that much, so I want to see what DraftKings comes in for pulling that trigger. So I am looking at the Trailblazers rebounding advantage, so look for me on Twitter. And then this Tottenham game. Tottenham's going up against the team that is in last place in the championship of the uh, English FA. So definitely a mismatch here for Tottenham. I'm a little hesitant. You've got to see lineups for this. We've seen... These lower tier clubs, and especially when they're at home, I mean, Byron got bounced from the German Cup. You saw Real Madrid get bounced from the Copa del Rey. I mean, these lower tier clubs turn up when they're at home. And this is a great opportunity for them to continue making revenue, and especially during a pandemic when you're not getting ticket sales. So they, they're going to turn up for these matchups, and we've seen it again and again. So I'm hesitant without seeing a Tottenham lineup. And then Tottenham plays Liverpool in their next matchup in three days. So Jose Mourinho's, you know, relatively speaking, going to field a shit lineup, I believe, today. And he's going to save everybody that's important for that Liverpool matchup. He's, I mean, that, that's a title race. That's a top four game. And it, it, everything involves, you know, that Liverpool matchup. So I think you're going to get, again, relatively speaking, a weekend lineup for Tottenham. I think the big boys will only come on in the last, you know, 20 minutes if needed. He'll throw on a Sun or he'll throw on a Kane, you know, in the last 20 minutes if need be. But the majority of this game will be played by the backups by Tottenham. So I just need to see lineups and then kind of work that into the bets of, of how I think maybe the match will go, you know, once we get lineups. So that's what I'll be doing there. So again, you can look for me on Twitter. That game, I think, is at I think it's at 2 o'clock, two, 2 o'clock Central Time. So you can maybe look for me around 1 o'clock Central Time on Twitter once the lineups come out if I've got that time right. So either way, though, you can go ahead and look for me on Twitter if I pull the trigger on that Tottenham game. Otherwise, guys, before I let you go, let's go ahead and do a free giveaway. Again, it's been, it's been a little bit of a long time since so we've done one. You know, best fans in the world. Love the comments. Love the interaction. So I want to go ahead and do a free giveaway. I'm going to do it two different ways. I'm going to go $200 total, but I'm going to do $100 straight out to you guys. I'm going to give four people $25 each. And then with the other $100, if you guys recall that one time where, you know, I made a $25 bet, and then when that $25 bet hit, we gave away the profits and we kept going until that $25 lost. I did that with the fans. I'm just going to do it myself just because it's a little complicated, a little a little difficult to coordinate just that daily uh, response with, you know, you know, with, uh, you know, with you guys. It's just a little difficult. So what I'll do with that last hundred dollars is I'll make a twenty five dollar bet. And then what we'll do is, yeah, and when that hits, I'll give away the winners and we'll just go until that twenty five dollar bet loses. And then when it loses, we'll do it with the second $25 bet until it loses, third, and fourth. So we'll do four times. We'll get it. So we'll get to hook up. You know, at, at, at minimum, four people are going to get the $25. And then hopefully with this free bet, obviously, we can then hook up a lot of other you know, people as long as well. So you guys know that how you guys enter these free bets by or the, you know, the free giveaways by now. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel. And just go ahead and drop a comment on this video. Subscribe to the channel and drop a comment on this video. Any comment you want, it's open book, whatever you guys want to say. I look forward to reading those comments. I look forward to giving away some money on tomorrow's show. I look forward to recapping these two NBA bets and possibly some other action on tomorrow's show. And we'll just start off the week. All right, guys, have a good one. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching this episode of Winning Bets. I'm Jason Mattis. I'll see you again when we're celebrating the wins and making more winning bets. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more winning bets.